Uh, our friend David Harsani always has the wisdom and the tenor that we need in ridiculous times like this. Good to talk to you, David. How are you, brother? I'm well. Thanks for having me. And uh, upcoming book, Euro Trash, which is more relevant by the day. Uh, when's that come out? October 26th. Oh, coming up. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, um, okay, we've got a couple things to talk about. Let's talk about uh, what is reconciliation and what do we need to know about the process that's happening right now in DC, as ugly as it looks? Uh, well, reconciliation means that you can pass budgetary items ostensibly through a simple majority vote rather than having to deal with filibuster. Uh, to, it was actually passed to help control debt spending. Um, the opposite has happened, obviously, with most um, most things in D.C. So now it's basically used as a way to cram through bills that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. So Democrats has, have decided to put their whole agenda into this reconciliation bill. And it's, you know, $3.5 trillion cost, but actually, as the Wall Street Journal points out, it's probably more like $5.5 trillion. And in reality, as we all know, once you have a new a welfare state program, it goes on in perpetuity, so it'll be forever, right? So it's just a massive reorganization of American governance. And uh, they want to do it uh, with the slimmest majority path possible. I wrote about this the other day. I mean, I went through every single major reform bill in existence uh, over, you know, in the post-war years, and every single one of them got like 68, 73 votes. Because when I was young, uh, you'd never see a party um, try to pass a giant bill without some kind of bipartisan consensus. But that's not happening now. So I, I guess those are the basics. That's really interesting. What do you account for that difference? Well, I, I actually blame, I, I mean, the first time I think that things really changed was Obamacare. You know, they decided that they were going to do it through reconciliation. They only negotiated with themselves in most part. Uh, you had a lot of um, more moderate Democrats around in those days. Almost all of them lost their seats after. Um, so in essence, I think Manchin and Cinema are, are saving Democrats politically in the long run. Uh, but I think the, the most Democrats think the price would be worth it, especially progressive uh, ones who, yeah. whose seats are, are safe. Uh, you know, we've obviously talked a lot about Manchin and how he's obviously every Republican's favorite Democrat right now because he's in West Virginia and all that. Uh, but I, I read the you tweet the other day that uh, you don't really trust Manchin uh, right now and May Kay, what do you think? No, I don't trust him. I mean, I you know, he's folded numerous times. I, mean, I think he just wants to scale down the bill. Um, I'm, I'm happy that he's there and I'm happy about the things he's saying. But having gone through the Obamacare um, fight, you know, there were many times it looked like it was dead and then it was resurrected. So, of course, I'm nervous about that. And I think Manchin is the kind of politician who can be bought. I don't mean that in a sort of illegal, corrupt way. Well, in a legal way, I do mean it in a corrupt way. You know, I think that, you know, if you give him enough stuff, you might vote for it. Cinema doesn't really talk that much, so it's hard to know what she's thinking. I think she's probably more principled than he is. Mm. Um, you know, obviously you articulate well, and it's true that gridlock is good. And like a lot of people are like, why can't we pass these things? It's like, oh, no, that's like the point is that you're not really supposed to. But I'm very concerned just about the system moving forward when it comes to spending and the incentives that are set up and the the state of lobbying and all this other stuff. And I don't know how we get back to any sanity when it comes to out of control spending. Is, is, has that ship sailed? Like, I, like, is there a way to truly bring it back or no? I don't know that we ever really had a, you know, I mean, when you look at spending from maybe even the eighties onward, you know, it's just been uh, the trajectory just grows and it compounds and, you know, it gets worse and worse. So I don't know uh, if there's any way back, but I, something has happened in recent years where Obama even pretended to care about the debt. There were there were debates over spending. They tried to keep Obamacare or pretend to at least under a trillion dollar price tag. Now they're just like, you know, money doesn't matter anymore. And in a way for people, you know, a million dollars you might understand with your house, your car, whatever. You understand what it could be. But a billion you don't, a trillion might as well be a bazillion. You don't, that's just abstract to you. It's just more than you have. And I think that that's why these debates have sort of spiraled into these numbers. I mean, $3.5 trillion is a massive amount. This is the biggest bill in American history. And we don't, you know, and people aren't really as mad about it as they should be. I see people getting more concerned about like wokeism, right? Which I care about. But you're talking about a complete restructuring of government through a reconciliation bill in a tied Senate. I mean, it's just insane what what they're trying to do. My theory is that you know that you mentioned Obamacare is eight hundred. It's like eight hundred seventy-eight billion or something. 
and this is 3.5 trillion. I think most people just look at the number. They look at the three, and they're like, oh, three is not a big number. And they don't even like pay attention to the trillion anymore. So that, that's my theory. That's how ignorant we all are moving forward. Uh, and this whole art thing, this is not getting nearly enough attention. What's the, what is, what is, what's really happening here? This is, this is a incredibly blatant fraud, is it not? Yeah, sometimes I think I'm taking crazy pills. Like, why aren't people more upset about these things? I mean, you literally had all the major tech companies, all the major establishment media outlets, the Washington Post, the New York Times, CNN, whatever, simply um, not just ignore a story, but uh, proactively try to undermine and smear the people who brought the story forward, claim it was Russia propaganda, claim it was um, that the people who reported the story hadn't followed prop proper uh, journalistic ethics and so on. And then, you know, a few months later when it doesn't matter anymore that much, you know, some liberal writes a book and says, oh, actually, you know, all of that was true. Hunter Biden's emails, you know, were real. Uh, Hunter Biden talks about Joe Biden being part of a business in which he leverages the Biden name to make lots of money from Chinese and Ukrainian, you know, shady business uh, dealings. Seems like it's super important. And uh, it's been <laughs> hardly a blip. But so there's two factors. There's one that there could be corruption here. And I'm not saying Biden was corrupt. I'm just saying that his name came up and it seems like something worthy of looking into more. And the second one is that you have big tech and all, you know, and, and, and big media censoring a story during an election to get their person elected. I mean, this, this seems like pretty big stuff to me. Wow, that was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.